Hey guys, I'm Michelle and welcome to my vegan kitchen. So today I want to make something really simple and a meal that's kind of dear to my heart. I'm going to make what, what they call in Jamaica because this is pretty Jamaican. This is from me growing up. So this is called sawfish fritters and it's dear to my heart because it's one of those things that so I love cooking, right? I love cooking. I've been cooking for as long as I can remember. I probably was about seven or eight when I made these. And I made it out of basic necessity. My parents worked a lot and sometimes there was nothing there to eat. So I was just like, I'm gonna make my own food. This is really simple. You only need a few ingredients. You need like flour. Um, remember I said in the beginning, we call it saltfish fritters. Now you know I'm plant-based, I'm vegan. So there is not going to be any fish in this. However, we will use hearts of palm to replace the sawfish and make this delicious fritter that is so easy. I hope you guys try to make it. Let's go. All right, guys. So I kind of have the setup here of what you're going to need. Like I said, flour. You're going to need some baking soda, a uh, baking powder. Sorry, some baking powder, salt and pepper an onion, not much onion, but this is like a half an onion, some tomatoes. You're gonna need roasted seaweed because we're trying to give it like a fishy flavor. Hearts of palm, some scallions, and your bowl. So let's mi mix this up, all right? This is really simple, it's really cool. So I'm gonna take my flour, and this is just basically all-purpose flour. You know, let's get this out of the way for a second. We're gonna just use all-purpose flour. I'm just gonna use one cup. All right, we're gonna keep this real simple. One cup all-purpose flour. I'm gonna do about maybe a half a tablespoon of bacon powder. I wonder why I wanna always say bacon soda. So let's just do half a tablespoon, all right? We just wanna give it a little bit of rise. Put that to the side. We're gonna salt this. So I like to add salt and pepper, and you'll see different variations of this, and I guess they'll call this poor man food because I'm telling you, it's so simple. I used to make this all the time, me and my seven-year-old self, I used to make it for myself and my sister, and this is what we'll eat until our parents came home from work. So I put the salt and pepper in there. I have an onion here. Take my little onion cover off. Skin off, and we're just gonna chop up, just rough chop this onion. Big rubber knife. And this is how I rough chop my onion. I'm just gonna use like this a piece of it. I just slice it up like that, and just kind of rough chop it like that, and put it right in the bowl. Because we want to taste like pieces of onions in there. Because when the onion is cooked, you know, have just like a really nice, delicious taste. I'm gonna take a tomato. And I like to use Roma tomatoes. They just, I find that they're just sweeter. And again, I'm just rough cutting that, leaving big pieces, throw it right in there. Rough cutting. I wanna leave nice big pieces so you can taste it. And I think I wanna use two tomatoes. You could use one, but I love the taste of tomatoes in a fritter. I just think it just has really good flavor. I think the salt and pepper and the taste of, you know, that kind of salty, fishy taste just tastes really good with tomatoes. So I'm throwing that in there. And that's pretty much it for my chopping. Let me cover my, my onion back up. Whoop. Well, that's gone. We won't even bother looking at that. All right, so we got, the, we got our, our flour, bacon powder, salt and pepper, and our onions right in here. This is my can of Hearts of Palm, okay? So Hearts of Palm comes in a can. It basically doesn't have a taste, but this is an excellent, excellent substitute for fish. So if in vegan dishes, when it calls for fish, you can use Hearts of Palm. And like you see, I'm just dumping the water out. That's all I'm doing, dumping the water out. This comes with like four hearts of palms. That's what it looks like. Grab my board again. I'm just gonna kind of just chop it up into small pieces. Let's chop it up, put it in my bowl. It's that simple. Chop it up, 
put in my bowl because I want to taste those pieces because it should taste like, like codfish. And for those of you that don't know what saltfish is, it's basically just salted cod. It was just a way that they preserve the codfish by placing it in salt to preserve it because there was no refrigeration, especially back in the slavery times. Basically, I mean, if you want to call this slave food, that is what it is. Chopping that up, well, chop, place it in the bowl. Rough chop. Place it in the bowl. Okay. So now I have all of this in the bowl. I'm gonna add my fish flavor. So my fish flavor comes from roasted seaweed and it comes in these little packages. You can get them basically in any supermarket nowadays and it looks like that. So I wanna just cut them up. So I'm just gonna use kitchen scissors. I'm gonna take my roasted seaweed, but it just come in like little pieces like that. And usually I use it to snack on, but we're gonna use it in this recipe to give it more of a fish flavor. I'm just gonna take my scissors and just cut little thin pieces. Oh, let's get rid of that. We don't want that in there. And we're just gonna cut it into thin pieces right into the bowl. Cause this is just gonna kind of cook down. You're not even gonna really see it once it's in there, but you're gonna taste the flavor. All right guys, so I just remembered the first thing I actually wanted to do was turn the stove on because we want a nice hot pot. We want this oil really hot when we get ready to put the fritter in. And that's what I should have did first, but that's okay. That's all right, we're gonna do it now. So let me grab some oil. I'm going to grab some grapeseed oil. And I'm putting that in my skillet. And I'm putting a generous amount because this is gonna soak up quite a bit of oil. It probably is not the healthiest, you know, meal, but hey, it tastes good. Let me put that away. Okay, so while that heats up, I have it on medium heat. So we're just gonna keep that on medium heat. We're gonna go back to our bowl. And this is what's in our bowl. So all those ingredients are in there. But I also wanna add, now this is a step you don't have to do, you, you don't have to, but I like the flavor of green onions. So I have my green onions here. I just think it adds a nicer depth of onion flavor to the recipe. I think it just makes the fritter taste really good. So I'm just gonna lightly just, just chop these green onions and I'm just gonna place them right in the bowl. And then we're gonna mix all of that just add by adding water. But I just think that green onions just gave it a nice flavor, but again, if you can't find the green onions, it's okay. You'll be fine with just regular onions, but I like it in the recipe. So this is what we got here. All right, now we're gonna add, let me just grab a spoon. We're gonna add our water. So this is what we have, just kind of mix it up a little bit. And we're just gonna slowly add water because we don't want it to be too loose. So I like to add a little bit of water because you can always add, but you can't take away. Now we're gonna add a little bit more water. So I would probably say so far, I put a half a cup of water in there. You see how it starts to get loose? Now I wanna mix that all up because I want it to be like a little thicker than like pancake batter. So kind of wet, but still kind of thick, if that makes sense. That's why I'm really showing you what you want the texture to The texture should be like that. So we could just kind of like drop it in the pot, if that makes sense. So let's just mix that up. So I want all my flavors to be mixed together. And that's what it looks like. Okay, perfect. So my oil is nice and hot. We're gonna just use the same spoon that we stirred with. So we're making them about spoon size. These probably are gonna be really big, but you can make them a little bit smaller if you like. And we're just gonna drop them in the hot pot. See that? Drop them in the hot skillet. 
Now I do like to use this this uh, type of skillet to fry because it heats up nice and even and nothing sticks. So we're just gonna put about four of them in here. Okay. I also have, oh, here it is. Kind of space them out a little bit. Okay. I probably should have did this a better way to flip it, but I see it. Look how pretty! It's all brown. This is how I flip it. So I just use a fork and one of a spatula and flip it over. And that's it. Look how pretty! I'm just gonna keep it on medium. Oh, that looks so good. All right, these look super beautiful. Look at that, the onions are cooked, the tomatoes are cooked. So all I'm gonna do now is just transfer it from the pot to a dish that has some paper towel because we just want the paper towel to be able to soak up the excess oil. So I'm gonna use my makeshift utensils here and just place them on the paper towel. That's it. So they're nice and brown, they're cooked all the way in. And I'm just gonna repeat this process. I think we'll probably have maybe three more or so, and then we're gonna plate it up, and we're gonna do my favorite part, which is tasting. All right, guys, so here's the finished product. They're so pretty, they're so pretty. But usually what I like to do, so while it's soaking up um, the excess oil, what I'm gonna do, because I love for my food, I love when my food looks Pretty. It has to look appetizing. So even though this looks really good, we're just gonna garnish it a little bit and we're gonna garnish it with some scallion or green onions. And if you notice, I keep my um, scallions or my green onions in water. So when I purchase them, I wash them all thoroughly because you know it, it collects a lot of dirt like on the inside. So I wash them and then I just keep them in the refrigerator in some water, just a little small container of water. The water doesn't have to come all the way up, just on the root, it just keeps them fresh. But I'm just gonna chop my scallion in pretty circles, you know, really thin. You don't want too much, you're just using it for garnish. And I'm gonna just use one stalk and just chop it really fine all of it from the white all the way to the green okay we're just going to use this as a pretty little garnish because it will still give it a nice like oniony flavor so we chop that all up here we go all right and then we're just going to plate it up get rid of any big pieces oh look at all that that was on this side of the knife I'm trying to throw away my, my scallions no 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 all right so we chop that up all nice. I get like a nice plate to uh, present. And we're just gonna place these right on the plate. Just line them up. These are great for like a filling appetizer. So if you know, you know, friends and families coming over and you wanna give them some filling appetizer because the food is just not gonna be ready right away, that's how you're gonna do it. There we go. And then we're just gonna take our garnish and just place it right on top. And look how pretty that is. That is absolutely yummy. It's all over my counter, but you get the idea. You get the idea. But you know, this is my favorite part, is tasting time. So let's taste it. I'm just gonna take this little piece. You know what? No, I'm gonna take a big old piece. Because like I said, this is childhood memories right here. This is like my first meal that I cooked when I was a kid. So we break it open and you can see, you're gonna see big pieces of hearts of palm, which is like your saltfish. It's gonna have a nice flavor. You see nice big pieces of onion and tomato. Let's try it. Mm, oh my God, it's so good. Brings me back to my childhood. This is absolutely delicious. And it's filling, like I said, you could use it as appetizer. Guys, you gotta really try this recipe. Please try what started it all for me cooking. Let me get this last piece in. Mm, really good. Well, we finished another recipe. Let me swallow. Thank you guys so much for visiting and staying with me in my vegan kitchen. Please join me again for another recipe. 
and how to step by step in my vegan kitchen guys thank you so much bye